All right, guys, so this is a 100 horsepower vertical hollow shaft pump. The reason it is a vertical hollow shaft pump is because the shaft is vertical and it's hollow. It doesn't look like it has any oil in it. So this was actually sent to us. It was serviced 10 years ago. It's never been ran since then. They want it gone through, but we're just going to be replacing this, treating it basically as a recondition. So I removed that mid cover and then I was going to drain the oil. I was pretty sure there wasn't no oil and there was no oil inside of this thing. So it has been stored this entire time also without any oil in there. The next step we're going to take is we're going to remove this fan cover up top. So there's two ridiculously long bolts that are holding that fan cover on. We take those out and make sure we do a little 360 walk around. We don't want to be lifting up that fan cover when we still have this in there. Using the bridge crane because I'm weak, I got the fan cover off. It weighed about 80 pounds, but I'm not going to try lifting that 80 pounds up in the air. Once we got that fan cover up and out of our way, the next thing we're going to need to do is remove this fan. Now that noise that you're hearing, some people are going to say it's a sprag bearing, but it's an anti-rotation device. It stops this pump from back spinning or spinning in the wrong direction. Now usually when you see these, they're ball bearings that sit inside those slots at a little angle. Um, these ones actually use vertical pins, so you can see them riding up and dropping over that ledge. And when you try to push them back towards that ledge, it's actually what's stopping it from rotating in that wrong direction. Now all these electric motors are balanced, so you can see whoever serviced it first, they put this little yellow line on here, so we line up the fan with that bearing carrier there. I'm going to go ahead and punch mark this because when we wash these parts, sandblast them and paint them, we might lose those lines. I also noticed there was a couple punch marks on this fan, but I didn't see any punch marks on that bearing carrier, so I went ahead and punch marked that because I figured they might be underneath it, but there was no punch marks. Now we can see these balancing holes, and now you can see how all those pins ride up and drop over those little ledges. We're going to have to take all of those pins out, but like I said, when I was removing that fan, I was hoping to see punch marks underneath it. There was none, so I'm glad that I did punch mark it before I removed it. Now to get all these pins out, I'm just going to take a piece of threaded rod or a through bolt, stick a magnet on it, and we can pull each one of these out one by one. Now I'm going to note where these go inside of that because I need to check the weight on these and make sure that none of them are different weights because if we put them back in the wrong hole, we're going to have an imbalance in this entire system again. So we'll weigh each one and make sure there is no difference. There was a little stink bug walking around on this thing while I was working. I decided to name him Carl. So if anything goes wrong with this disassembly, we're going to blame this on Carl. He's over there doing his little exercises, going up those inclines, down those ramps. Now, sometimes these pumps might have one bearing. They might have two. They might have three. They might have four. They're angular contact thrust bearings, and they might need to go in a certain orientation to deal with the down thrust or the up thrust in case there is some. It's very important that we put these bearings back in the same orientation, whether they're face to face, back to back, face to back, whatever that is, they need to go back the same way. And you might think I sped this clip up. I didn't. This is just how quickly I work when I'm in a rush. So I have that top plate off of there. We're going to remove this whole bearing carrier set up here. We got four bolts that are retaining that bearing down into that cavity. Once we remove those off, we should be able to slip this thing completely out the top. That top cap was kind of tough to get off, and I don't know if this was red Loctite that was inside of here. It's extremely sticky. It's all over the edges. I don't know if it's some type of sealant that never cured because of the oil inside of it, but whatever it is, I don't like it. Now, these pumps are really cool, and they could be deep well pumps. Sometimes that shaft might be running hundreds of feet down into the earth and pulling water up. Now, some of you might also ask the question that if the pump was serviced 10 years ago and it hasn't been put in service, why don't you guys just run it and give it back and say it's okay? Well, that has our name on it now, and we're going to be responsible for anything that happens with this pump once it goes back. And we don't know if they put these bearings on correctly. We don't know if everything is torqued down the way it should be. So it's best that if we're going to put our name on it, we're going to go back through this thing, and we're going to deal with every individual piece. There'd be nothing worse than just saying that this thing is okay, slapping paint on it, giving it back to them, and then they have a failure, and now we're on the hook to repair it again. We can remove this hull top cover, which serves as our oil bath. It serves as our upper end bell, if that's what you want to call it. It weighs about 300 pounds. I'm slowly lifting this off with the bridge crane, making sure that our weight doesn't change. As you can see, there is a scale up there. Once we have that top off, we've gained access to view our winding and our rotors. So there is a bearing on the lower end of that. And that's why we have those thrust bearings at the top that are going to actually support the weight of this rotor. We don't have all that downward thrust on a roller bearing that's at that bottom. We'll remove the bottom bolts that are holding that bottom end bell on and we'll slowly be able to slide that stator off. Again, watching the weight, making sure we don't have any snags or anything like that. We'll lift it up slowly. I am kind of speeding this clip up, but I wasn't speeding that other one up with my hand taking that nut off of there. The stator weighs about 1,100 pounds. We have our rotor assembly here, so we'll move this stator. I'm going to make sure that that winding isn't sticking down past the actual housing because I'm not going to want to set it on something where we might damage that winding in that case. We'll run electrical tests on the winding itself. We'll make sure everything passes and is acceptable to put it back together. 
Overall, this thing was extremely clean. I did notice that there was some buildup of oil in that bottom end. I would say that that happened from maybe from the travel, but there was no oil in it when it was brought to us. You never want to tip these motors on their side to transport them when they have oil in that top. It will flood the entire motor. Now our last step to completely disassemble this thing is we're going to need to lay this rotor down. I do like to wrap a bunch of electrical tape around those threads just so we don't smack nothing, ding those up, and have an issue putting that spanner nut back on. So we'll lay this down. We'll be able to remove the four bolts on that bearing retainer. This rotor weighs 590 pounds. And we have a snap ring on here. You can see we got fresh blue grease, also surrounded by some fresh black grease. Once we get this bearing pulled off, we get that end bell housing cleaned. We can go ahead and assemble this lower end. We've ordered the bearings for the top side and we'll be able to slap this thing back together in a couple days. We'll do a test on it, we'll run it. I'll post a video of that for you guys. Drop some comments down as always. I appreciate all the comments, follows, and cheers guys.